Hello everybody, this is Susan with Susan Monroe Art and today I am doing another painting in my series of watercolors showing stills from famous movies and TV shows and hopefully you all recognize this as the Dark Lord himself, Darth Vader from Star Wars, one of my favorite, favorite movies. If you like this series of paintings I've been doing lately, please hit the like button below the video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any suggestions for any movie scenes or stills that you'd like me to paint, please mention them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Now, on to the painting. So the color I'm using here is a mixture of Payne's Gray and Sepia. The Payne's Gray alone was just too blue and the Sepia strengthened that a little more and made it the appropriate black. I carefully tried to, to preserve the whites of my paper since I didn't have any masking fluid and I painted around them both in the reflections and in the parts of his mask that were white. Once I put in the first coat, I then went in with a second coat to strengthen. Sorry, there's a little jump there. I had one section that didn't tape. Here I'm going into the sleeve. I love painting reflections. I think they're really fun and they're easier than you'd think when it's a hard reflection like this, a sharp reflection. They really can look cool. Now going into his sleeves, you know, you notice so many little things you don't notice when you're just watching the movie. They were made out of some quilted black material that um, looked almost like leather. So I tried to give that texture a little bit and the wrinkles as I added this. And then back in, I had to keep going in and making things darker and darker because uh, every time the watercolors dry, it dries about 20% lighter than it looks when it's wet. So I had to keep on going in and reinforcing those darks. And that was a little tricky because I didn't have any masking fluid. If you've not used masking fluid, I have a video on how to use it. It preserves the white of your paper. I wasn't doing this painting at home. I was doing it at my parents' house on vacation. And I had to just carefully, carefully paint around all these little white spots. And um, I think I did a decent job on it, but if I had been doing it at home, I would have used masking fluid to make it a little easier for me to leave the white areas in his mask, those fine white lines, and some of the reflections as well. And here is my secret weapon, my gel pen. So if some of the whites didn't stay as white as I wanted them, I went in with my gel pen and reinforce them. I love using the gel pen for things like that. I think it works really, really well. Also, as I painted, I could do little corrections to my drawing, which wasn't perfect. You know, I had to adjust some of the outlines and um, fortunately using black paint, that makes it easy to do. You, you really don't see your pencil lines when you're painting in such a dark color. working on his upper body, which is sort of a helmet armor piece. And then one of my favorite things about this, this amazing photograph is his cape. I think just the, the composition of this is so perfect. You know, if you know the movie, that great moment, no, Luke, I am your father. Oh, it's amazing, I love it. I'm a total geek, what can I say? Working in those creases in the sleeves again and I paid attention you know, usually when there's a crease on one side there will be a corresponding crease on the other side mirroring that one. And his gloves, his gloves were fun to paint. I really enjoyed doing this part and his lightsaber that he's holding in his hand, super cool. Another thing that was fun about this painting is it's pretty much a monochromatic painting. I'm using just one color. There are not a lot of color choices I have to make. 
everything on him except for the the lights on his chest and some of the 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 lights that are around him there's a yellow light in front of him everything was just Payne's gray and sepia mixed together so it was a great study for doing uh pretty much a monochromatic painting and i th- i would uh, suggest that to anybody who is looking to uh, improve their skills in shading and uh tone making sure things are dark enough a monochromatic painting will really help with that onto his other sleeve which is made out of that leather stuff and then to me this was the focal point of the painting between his mask and this hand reaching out I tried to to draw it so carefully to get the right proportions and and everything and um, I think it worked out pretty well Now on to his little, what do you call this, his light box on his chest, his control center? I don't know what that is. Just something cool. Had to very carefully paint around all those little tiny lights and dials and buttons. Another place where I would have used masking fluid if I had had it. And also on this little side box he has on his hip, which I'd never noticed before. And now we're moving into his pants, which were super dark. And he has this sort of, I don't know, what you'd call like a cod piece that went in front. Um, that was interesting to paint. It's a little reflective. I had to show that. And then showing some creases and wrinkles in his uh, pants, leggings, whatever they are. And it's really coming together at this point. I say you get to the point where I realize, hey, I'm not gonna totally screw this up. It's it's gonna be okay. And I finally reached that point around here. His belt was a little fiddly with all these little things on it. The lightsaber. And here I am just adjusting, going in and, and uh, strengthening some of the darks, really looking at the overall picture to make sure I'm, I'm balanced in terms of darks and lights. And the cape was a little tricky. I finally just went ahead in and painted over a lot of these uh, light areas and decided I would use clear water on my brush after the paint dried just to lift the paint to show those folds and creases in his cape rather than just leave them. They looked like white stripes in his cape before and I thought this was just a more delicate way to show those, those creases and folds in his cape. Now we're finally on to another color, some yellow. I believe this was Windsor yellow I used. And his buttons. Some reflections on him and then these little poles I don't know where they were but they were they were cut off during the lightsaber battle and that's why they look so rough at the top and some little yellow reflections were in them from the yellow light that's in front of him so I made sure to include that Now going into the tops, they just were rough, looked like the surface of the moon, gray, starks, lights. So I put in the darks, of course, with the black paint, but then some of the whites, I used my gel pen again, because like I said, I really think it's great for adding those whites. Now 
Now to the background. I gave the whole background just a light coat of, of my uh, Payne's Gray Sepia Mix. And then went in after that had dried and uh, painted in the little square shapes um, of the Death Star behind him. Which was a little tedious, but I, I think it makes a cool background and I, I liked it. And we're just gonna jump to the end of that because there was really nothing to see there. Boring, just painting in squares. Then to make the little lights that were behind him, I used my gel pen again, went in, I tried to copy some of the patterns on there. Some of them I just made up, but dot, 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 all around the background. And in hindsight, I probably should have made those squares a little darker to have more contrast between the, the lights and the darks in the back. But then I didn't want to compete with the darkness of Darth Vader's figure either. So, you know, it was a nice compromise. I think it worked out. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching this. And uh, may the force be with you.